connected with entertainment. Today, Olympia is a tired, washed-up structure that definitely saw her better days and nights. The crowds are no longer there, but looking back, I can remember the excited crowds that pushed through her narrow doorways, the precious tickets. connected with entertainment. Today, Olympia is a tired, washed-up structure that definitely saw her better days and nights. The crowds are no longer there, but looking back, I can remember the excited crowds that pushed through her narrow doorways, the precious ticket to see that particular event. Sometimes it was a long walk and climb to get to the seat you had purchased. But once you were there, you had a great view of the action, unless you were behind the post. Today, those foot-worn aisles, tattered row of seats, and the bleak interior are just reminders of the past and the fond memories that are still vivid in one's mind. The hockey nights when the Red Wings were on their way or in the Stanley Cup playoffs. The excitement that was part of those games, even if it was just standing room. Whether you accompanied your parents, ventured on your own as a teenager, arrived as a young adult or a mature middle-ager, there were attractions that sought your keen interest. The cheering has long subsided, but in the mind, Olympia Stadium still holds treasures close to the heart and that mind. And now I know when they speak of the good old days. And even still young at heart. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So many, many memories in the old Rick Laney. I remember going there as a kid. Yep, same yeah. here. Built in 1927 in the home of major events for nearly three quarters of a century, the building has been empty since 1979. The Detroit landmark has memories, but it's a waste and a mess the way it stands today. At McGraw and Grand River, within 90 days, just the ground will be there. And former Seattle... Gordy Howe skated to fame there. Elvis and the Beatles rocked and rolled there, but the glory days of Olympia Stadium, or the Olympia, have been over for more than a decade. And starting tomorrow, the building will be prepared for demolition. Monday, it actually starts to come down. The walls will be pulled down. With every brick that falls, a thousand memories for Detroiters will tumble with it. The Red Barn on Grand River opened back in 1927. During its heyday, it was the home of both the Pistons and the Red Wings. The city says it will construct a new building on this site, an armory that will be done by 1988. And that's what's happening this Tuesday, July 8th. Joe yeah, was the home of the Red Wings for many years until the team moved to Joe Lewis Arena. Workers today began tearing down the Olympia Stadium on Grand River in Detroit. But the 60-year-old former home for the Detroit Red Wings and Pistons will live on in memories, especially for those last-minute souvenir hunters who are up today. Picture. Progress, but really it's kind of sad. There have been well, a ton of landmarks ripped away from Detroit over the years. Many magnificent buildings leveled, like the old City Hall downtown. But a building known by generations of Detroiters as the old Red Barn was more in the class, I guess, of what a monument. It was the home of the hockey in Detroit for 53 years. Olympia, the old red barn in Grand River is well on its way to becoming a memory this evening. The steel jaws of a wrecking machine ripping into the building today, turning it into a pile of bricks and rubble and memories. It was the home of Gordy Howe, Alex Del Vecchio, the world champion, Stanley Cup champion, Detroit Red Wings. Some people gathered to grab bricks as souvenirs to serve as memories of the magic moments that filled Olympia in its heyday. We wish it well. It was a lot of fun down there. Ted Koppel next with Nightline. Have a pleasant, peaceful evening. See you tomorrow at 5. Good night, everybody. Dana? We thank you for joining us. Good night. You Witnessing the passing of an era, Olympia Stadium, the Red Brick Lady is coming down. Soon, the famous bricks, which saw so many of Detroit's biggest events, will be carted away leaving nothing more than a vacant lot. 
Tonight, in the last of a special series of reports, our Ray Lane takes a final farewell look at the lady, which meant so much to generations of fans. Olympia Stadium was just one of the landmark buildings erected in Detroit during the 1920s. The Olympia opened her doors in October of 1927, and for 53 years, the oversized brick structure was the mecca for just about every type of sport and entertainment attraction available. It was the guardian of tradition and served as a stadium, an arena, or theater. For a Detroiter, this monument at Grand River and McGraw was very often something special. Olympia was something, something special. It was a, an old red barn, as they called it, but it was warm, and, and the, you were on top of the action, no matter what it was, a, a circus or an ice show or, or a hockey game. You were right there, and the, close to the action, you could see the players, you could see the performers, and it really was a, 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 a building that was good for spectators, and I think that was which made it in Detroit. And, uh, it really had a special feeling to it. The people today uh, talk about Olympia and, and as if it's their brother or sister. Yes, the memories are there. For most of us, the applause, the cheering, and even the booing have long ago faded. But there are still vivid recollections. I have just nothing but happy feelings, good feelings about what's happened in the past. And I don't look at Olympia being closed as something catastrophe. It's, uh, to me, you can't stop progress. And, and, uh, it's served its purpose, it's had its day, but things have to move on. And so a new era has been reached, but that former era seems almost like yesterday. I can still see some of those attractions that were and are a part of my life, and I'm sure a part of yours. about 90 more days and only memories will remain at Michigan and McGraw. That's sad. It is. <laughs> the old place is coming down, the Olympia. One of the final bricks. Well, I guess we've got a few thousand left over, really we have. <laughs> but if you've been watching our news presentation, we would like to thank Lincoln Cavallari, the former general manager and president of the Detroit Olympia, the Red Wings, the National Hockey League, and also Cahuga Demolition for helping us out to make our sort of special three-part series a reality. It's what been a, fun. What a wonderful look back, Ray. Going back and get the seats tonight. Terrific <laughs> series. Did you bring that brick for me? Yes. No, thank you. <laughs> As I'm talking to you, there's still one or two souvenir seekers in the background behind me right now. I kind of get the impression Gordy Howe may be looking at this place today and just shaking his head in disbelief. If you think there were some sad moments when the Red Wings played their final game at the Olympia in 1979, then you should be here today. The demolition team has been going at it since about 9.30 this morning. Slowly but surely, Olympia Stadium is coming down brick by brick. But those bricks are priceless to sports fans who came from all over the Detroit area to grab a piece of history. How do you feel about it today, seeing it the way it is now? It's tough. It's tough to look at this building and uh, see it coming down. Wish they could have done something more with it over the years, developed it somehow. But uh, a lot of old memories here. Good times were also shared by Steve Benson and other fans who had their cameras in focus trying to preserve some memories. The way it looks now, uh, it's rather sad because I can see the players coming out, playing and coming out to the rink and to watch us is pretty sad. 
During Olympia's sad final days, you will see some of the hardcore Red Wings fans. Jim McHugh has been here every day for the last six weeks. I love this place more than anything in the world. And, uh, you know, it was my last chance to spend time in here. So, you know, that's what, you know, had to do it. What have you retrieved from here? Seats, uh, lots of seats, uh, uh, pieces of the boards. Uh. No, Gordy Howe hasn't returned, but one of his biggest fans has been busy souvenir hunting. I uh, had two seats from uh, tan seats from up in the mezzanine that I took to the Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto, Canada. I also got a small section of the arena board and I gave it to the Hockey Hall of Fame with other items like cups and magazines and books and everything. He did get a little bit of everything. And George and Kathy, one common denominator among all the fans I talk with today, they told me there was just no place to see a hockey game like the Olympia. Verge, uh, for people going down there looking for some final memories at this point, that thing behind you looks dangerous. They're not going to let them in there now, are they? They're not going to let them in here, but there are ways you can sneak inside, although there's not very much left in there. There are a few seats, but the sideboards and the floor and the clocks and everything else, the fans have gotten to already. But there are a couple of seats inside, although we wouldn't advise anybody going in there for safety reasons. When do those big walls behind you up above your, uh, when do they start coming down, Verge? The project manager told me today he expects the walls to come down sometime next week, probably the middle of next week. Initially, they had said, Monday, but now they've revised that. Okay. Verge, uh, being the sentimental person that I am, would it be too much to ask for you to bring me back just one brick from the Olympia Stadium? Kathy and George, they're already in the truck over there. Okay. <laughs> Your name's on that. You're ahead of us. Thanks very much. Verge Jacks reporting from that uh, grand old red barn on Grand River. Well, George, if the wall... The second, 1927. The mid to late 1950s saw a golden era, crowned in 1954-1955 with the Stanley Cup. There was a National League title the following year. Names like Alex Del Vicchio, Ted Lindsay, Terry Sawchuk, and Gordie Howe graced a star-studded roster. But the man who coached them says then general manager Jack Adams was the driving force. Jack Adams was the, was the fellow that he backed me to the hilt when I was coaching. He used to call me up in the office after a game, even if we won it two to one. And he'd say, Jimmy, this is constructive. He says, uh, why did you do this? Why did you do that? And I learned from it. Coach Skinner stayed with the Red Wings organization until he retired in 1982. Skinner says modern athletes have more physical skills, but less of the intangibles. Players, I, I, in my estimation, and in my own opinion, are above the management now. now. Not all of them. There is some real dedicated players, but on the whole, uh, the players are listening to their agents. It was another era. The top players were paid $17,500 a year. A ticket cost $4. The night gate receipts for a full house came to just a little over $4,000. There's a lot of good members in that building. Because I know I worked there a long time, and I hate to see it tear down, but to say it's like I say, you can't stop progress. The incomparable Joe Lewis fought here, as did Barry Gordy. That's right, Barry Gordy, the man who later created the Motown song. And Barry Gordy, yes, and Les Fern, Art Aragon, Luther Rawlins, and uh, I think Willie Pepp also boxed on the show down there. Every time you go by, you got to look at that corner there, so you're going to miss the Olympia. you got to miss the Olympia. The Beatles played Olympia in 1964, and they weren't the only super acts featured here. We had um, Elvis Presley. Expansion in the late 1960s wasn't enough to keep the brick slapshot house from succumbing to high crime on the outside and low seating capacity on the inside. The final curtain came December 15, 1979, the night of the last hockey game in the arena. The one-time shrine of sports icons has fallen in ruins, while true believers try to keep the faith and a few artifacts as well. This is a jewel. This is a jewel right here. This is a jewel. This will How many angry athletes forever. touch that doorknob? When you went in there at a night game to see a hockey game, even when the wings are bad, just going in this place, you just felt so, you know, pumped up. A championship for a club in the Wings farm system has some fans hoping for the reincarnation of dormant competitive spirits, despite lingering suspicions that outside these walls, lionized by the sacrifice of blood, sweat, and front teeth, new heroes will somehow skate on thinner ice. 
On the west side, Woody Willis, Channel 2 Eyewitness News. Other super attractions at Olympia included the Harlem Globetrotters and 1940s ice skating star Sonia Henney. Now there are plans to build a National Guard armory at the school.